In this video, we're swapping out this Jeep for this Jeep, and we're headed to Moab, Utah. Along the way, we'll find a couple wide spots in the road, and I'm gonna answer all your questions about being an airline pilot. This is gonna be fun, you ready? Let's go. My name's Paul. I fly airplanes for a living, but my passion is encouraging you to explore this beautiful world by giving you a glimpse into my layover life. If you head west from Denver for about six hours, you'll drive some of the most scenic roads this country has to offer. After you traverse the mountain passes, you'll hit the high desert and turn to follow the Colorado River. This is where our adventure starts. This is where I'm going to answer all your questions about being an airline pilot, from travel to career to family. This is Moab, Utah. We started our first day with a hike to one of the most spectacular arches near Moab, Corona Arch. During the warmer months, do this hike first thing in the morning since it gets sun all day. Be sure to wear a hat and carry plenty of water. Little shade is found along the trail, except beneath overhanging cliffs in the late afternoon. The trail is easy to follow, although it does cross some wide expanses of slick rock pavement. A couple of slick rock sections also have metal cables to use as handrails, as well as a ladder on one steep step. Just hang on tight. Oh my goodness! Video, even I can do it! Good job, buddy! If you have a fear of heights or unsure footing, it's best to stop after the first cable to view the arch. Corona Arch is a spectacular span composed of Navajo sandstone. The arch opening measures 140 feet across by 105 feet high. We have made it to the arch. So while they have a snack, I thought I'd answer some of the pilot questions that you guys asked. I broke it down into three different categories, travel, career, and family. First section we're gonna to answer today is travel. How does the night before a flight look in terms of what I do? I don't do, oh, I do a lot the same every time. I go to the store, I buy my snacks, granola, apples, candy, <laughs> and then I usually end up packing for a trip uh, right before I go to bed, like 10.30 at night before I'm, Whatever flight I'm taking the next morning, I'm going to bed about 10.30, and that's when I pack. So it only takes me 20 minutes to pack, but I generally have a good idea of what I'm gonna bring on a trip. Especially if I know where I'm going, I know what I'm gonna bring on a trip as far as clothing and stuff goes. Next question, what is the best way to show airline staff appreciation? That's a great question. And flight attendants, pilots do probably, but flight attendants love Starbucks gift cards. <laughs> and that's totally okay to give them. It's a really nice thing to do. So don't ever hesitate to give flight attendants Starbucks gift cards. When we travel like on a, a bigger trip overseas or something, sometimes I'll put together a little gift bag of a Starbucks gift card, um, some breath mints, a little bit of candy, and then maybe a dollar tip for the van. Flight attendants and pilots give the van drivers one dollar for every, every time we go to the hotel. It's just kind of this known thing. So I don't know, it doesn't cost very much, but it, uh, if you were to slip a dollar into the Ziploc bag to give to every crew member for their van tip, that, that means you are in the know as far as like how airline operations work. How do I handle long flights? When do I eat on long flights? Long flights, I guess your definition of long might be different. A longer flight for me would maybe be 11 hours. That's probably the longest flight that I would do on my airplane but it goes by super fast in the cockpit, especially since you take off, you fly with one first officer for a while, then you go back and have a nap for a little while, then you come back and fly with a different first officer, and then you land, so it goes by really fast. Another part of that question was, when do you eat on long flights? I generally eat a bigger, like, I don't know if it's breakfast or dinner time, I'll generally eat before the flight and then maybe have a snack, a salad or something en route. I don't try to eat too much on the airplane. I try not to eat airplane food either because it's good. <laughs> but it's not necessarily good for you to eat it all the time. How do I find all the cool layover spots? Usually Instagram. This trip actually started, I saw an Instagram post and I was like, oh, that looks really cool. And then I flew with a guy who told me that the most beautiful drive he's ever been on was from Moab to Denver. So that's kind of what prompted this trip. But that's how I find, I'll search hashtags or whatever on Instagram 
Um, I follow a bunch of different travel people on Instagram and that's literally how I find almost all the places I go. Uh, my favorite destination with regards to views during the approach, probably Lihui, Hawaii. And it's, <laughs> it's really, really beautiful during the last five minutes of the flight. The last five minutes feels like you're flying in a Jurassic Park. Um, the rest of the flight obviously is just water. <laughs> but as far as an approach goes, if you're ever flying into Lihui in Kauai, sit on the left-hand side of the airplane and uh, the view out the window right before you land is spectacular. What do I work on when I'm in the lounge, a degree or studying? No, usually I'm working on editing a YouTube video or TikToks or Instagram reels or whatever. That's usually what I work on. What's the sketchiest thing I've ever seen on an airplane? Anyone walking into the lavatory barefoot or with socks on? That's gross, <laughs> don't, don't do that. How much turbulence before I get worried? It, it'd have to be a lot. Um, it'd have to be so much that we wouldn't be able to maintain altitude, which I've never ever seen in a small plane, a big airplane, ever. It's never been so bad that I haven't been able to maintain altitude. Um, but that would be when I would be concerned. And that's, you're talking like you're in the middle of a thunderstorm and that we don't really do that. What would you do or say to passengers who are terrified of flying? Um, I have a whole video for nervous flyers, so maybe go watch that. I'll put a link to that right up here. How do you deal with jet lag? Top tips. Drink a lot of water, work out, don't drink too much alcohol. I try to do those things, but that doesn't always happen either. Um, when you get to Europe, I generally will sleep for about an hour and a half and then go out. Um, my biggest tip is though, whatever time zone you're in, you have to tell yourself that that's what time zone you're in because if you tell yourself, well, it's 2.30 in the morning at home, well then, your brain's never gonna wrap around the fact that it's not 2.30 where you are. Where do I like to sit in an airplane when I'm not flying? First class, <laughs> or the exit row, or the bulkhead. Um, I don't like the first row of first class because there's no spot for your bag usually, unless you're in like Polaris and United has a spot, but otherwise in coach over the wing or in the exit row is great. I don't like sitting in the way back, but I will if that's where the last seats are. I, <laughs> I'm not super picky, it's just, you know, it's eight hours. If it's eight hours or two hours, it doesn't matter. It's a small, very small portion of a vacation. Shopping, do I buy luxury goods for friends and family? How often do you get tax free? So I don't do that super often, but I did fly with a guy in Amsterdam who bought like a 5,000 euro watch and the euro and dollar about the same. So it was 5,000 euros, but he, you know, taxes over there were six. Oh, sorry about that. Taxes over there were about 600 euros, and you can get things tax-free. So when you go to the airport the next day, whatever you've bought in the country, you can get a tax refund. And so he saved, you know, six or seven hundred dollars by uh, by getting the tax refund and buying the watch in Amsterdam instead of buying it in the United States. So I don't do that super often, but I usually bring home um, some groceries or like mustard from Paris or pastel donatas from Portugal or whatever, something like that. Peanut butter in Amsterdam, I bring that kind of stuff home usually. Do I have any travel credit cards? I have the Marriott Chase Club card. Hey buddy. Hi. Um, I have the Marriott Chase Club card and that gets, it's mostly just to get me into the United Club because um, I spend a lot of time in there. Why do so many captains hate Channel 9? If you don't know, Channel 9 is where you can listen to the air traffic control when you're on the airplane. It used to be like in the seat back or in the seat in the armrest. Now it's actually part of the in-flight entertainment system. I don't think captains hate Channel 9. I think they are worried that they're gonna get in trouble for some reason, but no one's ever gotten in trouble in the history of Channel 9 for saying something on the radio that they shouldn't have. Someone told me once that listening to Channel 9 is what inspired them to become an airline pilot. And so I think it's fun to have that on. So I like to have that on. Depressurization, how often does it happen? Also, does it feel like the plane is nose diving? It doesn't happen very often. I've never had it happen. Um, it does probably feel like the plane is nose diving compared to a normal descent. If we need to descend fast, we can descend at probably six to 7,000 feet per minute. Um, that way we get down to 10,000 feet, which is a breathable altitude. Um, in a couple minutes. It would feel like a steeper descent than normal, but it's not like dangerous or anything. A new long haul route you'd like to see United at? Probably Gdansk, Poland. My wife and I used to go to Russia every summer and we go to an orphanage over there and hang out with the kids. I've got a video from that, I'll put that up here. But we go through Gdansk, Poland and it is 
awesome. It's so pretty. It's right on the Baltic Sea. And uh, I don't know, if we went there from Newark, I'd be, I'd be pretty happy with that. Do non-ribs get priority over complimentary upgrades into premium cabins? No, um, we can list for a premium cabin, but the revenue travelers, they get priority. If they have, if they have an upgrade status, then they get priority over a non-rev. Do you keep the hotel points when work books the rooms for you? It kind of depends on the hotel. We don't usually get points, but we'll get nights, like night credits. So like in Zurich and Lima, we get Marriott credits, uh, but just the night stay, we don't get points. Um, and then other cities, mostly in the United States, you for sure don't get credit or points. Um, but overseas, a lot of times you'll get uh, night credits. What is the coolest thing you noticed from the sky that you wouldn't have noticed on the ground? Honestly, sunrises and sunsets are beautiful every single time. <laughs> and like, think of the most beautiful sunset you've seen from the ground. That's what they look like from the sky every single time. So consistently, that's probably the coolest thing. Last question when it comes to travel. Oh, it's windy, huh? Sure. Last question. Do you have to get your passport stamped every time you travel to a new country? There's a few countries, Germany is one of them, where we get a stamp, but we have a separate piece of paper so we don't fill up our passport. Um, but generally, no, we don't get our passport stamped in any of the countries we go to, unless you want one. If it's the first time you've been somewhere, then sometimes people want to get their passport stamped. Um, but otherwise, no, we don't. After our next adventure, we are going to talk about career questions. Stay tuned for that. You ready, bud? Yep. Let's go. What we're doing today is something I've wanted to do ever since I saw it in a Karen Nate video. We're driving Gemini Bridges, which is an off-road trail. This is why we rented a Jeep, and I hope when we get to the top, we won't have wished we bought the extra car insurance. I'm gonna answer all your career questions when we get to the top and have lunch. You ready? I'm ready. You guys ready? You guys ready? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> The road to Gemini Bridges starts about 11 miles north of Moab, just off Highway 191. Unless you're driving a vehicle designed for off-roading, I wouldn't suggest it. A fear of heights might also keep some people away, because this first section is pretty exposed. As a matter of fact, not everyone in my family loved it. You know what I want to do? What? Go back. <laughs> <laughs> So don't, when you go over like rocks like that, make sure you hit them with the tight, like you don't want to go over the middle, the middle of the car. You don't want that right over the rock because that's how you'll bottom out. So you want the tires to be going over the bigger rocks. Like a roller coaster. I like to bring my kids on adventures because adventures build bravery and brave people do great things. But being brave can feel pretty scary sometimes. What's scary about it? Everything. Everything? What do you think is going to happen? We're going to crash. We're not going to crash. Oh, we're not going to go off the mountain. It's kind of like turbulence in an airplane. It's just bumpy. It feels kind of scary, but it's, there's nothing really to be scared about when you think about it. While turning around is what my son wanted to do, sometimes the best way to get through something that scares you is to keep pressing on. Because by the time you're scared, you're already through the thick of it. And you're moments away from seeing the beauty of your bravery. We have arrived at Gemini Bridges. That was quite the drive. And where we're headed next is still a little bit more of a drive. But wow, this is incredible. A short walk from the parking lot are the actual Gemini Bridges. Two arches formed out of a rock that you can walk across. Just don't venture too close to the edge. What a cool spot this was. Let's see if I can answer all these career questions before I get back to the car. Number one, why did you want to become a pilot? I got a ride when I was 13 in a small airplane. Started lessons the following summer and worked at the airport and got my private instrument in high school, but mostly I just loved flying. I've got a video talking about my whole flying journey. I'll put a link to that right up here. Have I ever failed a check ride or barely passed? I barely passed my private pilot check ride, but I did fail my multi-engine check ride. Um, I failed the oral portion of it, so 
everyone is gonna fail a check ride, and it's okay if you do. It doesn't mean you're not gonna get hurt by an airline. So if that happened once or twice, don't let that stop you, keep going. Who inspires me? Good question. My dad, for sure. He grew up in a kind of a poor family and uh, worked really hard, became an eye doctor, and worked six days a week most of his life. So he, for sure, inspires me. Um, someone else, maybe a kind of a group of people. I know a few flight attendants who have quit being flight attendants, learned how to fly, and now they're working for regional airlines or they're working for United. So those kind of people who quit their career halfway through life and start over, especially a career like being an airline pilot, that's pretty inspirational. Is 36 too old to become an airline pilot? No, not at all. The people I was just talking about, the flight attendants, they were around that age when they started. Um, I know another guy who was a professional cinematographer. He quit when he was 37, became a pilot, and now he's 43 and he's a pilot. So, a pilot for United. So, it's for sure not too late. If your dream airline hasn't called, but another airline did, how do you decide where to go? That's a great question. When I got hired by Continental, there wasn't really an option to go to other airlines. So you just went to the first one that said yes, basically. Um, now it's a little more open, like you get hired by Delta, but you wanna work for United, some people switch, but being an airline pilot is an awesome gig, regardless of who you work for. So be pretty happy that you're a major airline pilot and you did it. Commuting and all its ups and downs. The ups and downs are, you don't spend as much time at home as you would normally but you can live wherever you want. So that's a good thing. The plus side of being an airline pilot is that you get about 15 days off a month. So even though you're spending some time commuting, you're still home more than like the average nine to five employee. What do you and your co-pilot do in the cockpit in the autopilot portion of the flight? That's the majority of the flight. <laughs> we are still pretty busy. There's one person running the autopilot, kind of like you run the cruise control in your car. And there's another person who talks on the radios, manages all the paperwork, talks to the passengers, all that kind of stuff. So even though we're not physically hand flying the airplane, we're still monitoring and we're pretty busy. Are your commuting flights from Minneapolis to New York free or do you have to pay to use flight benefits? Yeah, they're free. Uh, we can jump seat on whatever other airline we want and commuting on United is free if you're using a pass. Is it worth taking a loan out to cover some or all of flight school? Yeah, for sure. If you try to save up the money, it's gonna take forever <laughs> and seniority is king. So you wanna get hired by a major as soon as possible. So I think it's worthwhile. Pretty soon you're making pretty decent money and you can pay off those loans. Love your content. What's the likelihood of flying wide body aircraft in one flight career? Right now we have new hires going to the 787 and 777. Um, so if you get hired by United, like you could be doing that next month. Do I have a call sign like Maverick? No, that'd be cool. That's <clears throat> mostly military people that have that. Airline pilots don't. You could call me captain, <laughs> but Paul is what I prefer. Would I ever choose to switch airplanes to like the 787 or 777? Yeah, for sure. When the 757 and 767 are no longer flying, I will probably switch, I don't know, to the 787 maybe? Whatever's gonna get me the best schedule. Is it easy at United? You just go through training, it's like five weeks of training, so I wouldn't say it's easy, but um, it's not as easy as just flying normal trips. You just apply for it or bid for it and then you get awarded it and then you go do it. So how many hours of flight time do you have to work in a month? We fly about between 70 and 85 hours a month. That's pretty standard. You cannot fly more than 100 hours in a month. So they keep it right around the 70 to 80 hour a month range. What type of in-flight emergencies, plane related, have you experienced? Um, smoke in the cabin is probably the one that was the most worrisome because fires can get out of hand pretty quick. There was never a fire, it was smoke from a light in one of the lavatories, but we were on the ground within about 20 minutes and everything was fine. Um, but yeah, smoke in the cabin is probably the biggest thing that had my heart rate up the most. How do you make sure the plane isn't carrying too much weight? We don't do that. <laughs> um, our load planners do that. They get all the passenger information and bag information and then they run it through their computer and they do all the weight and balance stuff. So 
they send us the final weights with like how much we weigh and the center of gravity and all that stuff but we don't really calculate anything that's all already calculated okay I'm back to the car I did not finish all the questions got a few more here what made me decide to join the 121 world instead of 135 mostly the job security if you work for a 135 which is like charter um, or even corporate that's the job security there is not super great and airline job security as far as like flying jobs go is probably one of the most secure jobs in the flying industry. When you are on a layover and get sick and you can't fly, who takes over your flight and do you get paid? You can call in sick on a trip. I've had to do that a few times. Once my wife went into labor and I was in Lisbon, Portugal. I told the company what was going on. They flew me back home straight away and they flew someone else out to Lisbon to cover that flight. So uh, yeah, for sure happens and they can, they'll get, if you're really sick or have a family emergency, they'll get someone to cover your trip. Now, there are certain times where you have to wear the blazer and hat or is it entirely up to you? <clears throat> Whenever we leave the continent, we have to wear the blazer and hat. And then in the winter, which is October 15th to April 15th, everyone has to wear the hat and blazer when we're anywhere in the world. Of the four types that fly, the 757, 200, 300, 767, 300, 400, which one do I enjoy the most? Well, the 767, 400 pays the most, so kind of like that. And actually, I, I do like flying that the most. It's it's pretty fun. As a United pilot, can you commute from Europe? Yeah, for sure. I've got a flight attendant friend who commutes from Rome. Um, I knew a pilot once who commuted from Warsaw, Poland. So yeah, for sure, you can, as long as you get to work on time, it doesn't matter where you commute from. Do you ever travel to a country where you're advised to stay at your hotel because of safety? Uh, not very often. We, we used to fight a Caracas, Venezuela. We kind of stayed on a compound there, but <clears throat> there's not many places where we have to stay at the hotel. Why well, have I chosen Newark base over a other United base like Chicago, which is closer to home? Um, Chicago is a closer commute, but it is not necessarily easier. There's a lot of commuters and the flying's better in Newark as far as like <clears throat> Europe trips go. Patrick here from Malaysia. Okay, that's wild that anyone from Malaysia is watching my videos. Just curious to know, what's your end goal in the aviation industry? Really, my end goal would be to have a career where I didn't bend any metal, everyone got where they needed to go safely, and I got to spend a lot of time with my friends and my family. And that's what I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna get back to that. We're headed somewhere else really cool right now. And when we get there, I'm gonna answer all your questions about family. I will see you at Moonscape Overlook. If you drive two hours west of Moab, just past Hanksville and toward Factory Butte, you'll arrive at a spot that can only be described as otherworldly. This is off the typical tourist route, which is personally my favorite kind of place, but it's worth visiting if you're in the area of Capitol Reef National Park. You'll know you've reached the location when you see a vast valley filled with wave and crater-like landscapes and shades of gray, brown, and black. This is Moonscape Overlook. One of the reasons people come to Moonscape Rock is to go out on this ledge. And I got someone to fly my drone, and I'm gonna do it, because I'm here, and this is pretty rad. <laughs> Set of questions I'm going to answer is about family and how it applies to being an airline pilot. You guys ready to answer some questions? Uh, I don't know. I'm not prepared. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I haven't told them any of the questions. I asked and asked. But <laughs> First question. This might be for mommy. Does being away from home so often help 
or hurt your romantic life. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little private. <laughs> Distance does make the heart grow fonder. <laughs> <laughs> I always miss you when you're gone, so you just have to work we'll, hard at keeping the romance we'll, alive. We'll stick with distance meets the heart grow fonder. <laughs> Can your family wife travel with you when you have a long layover? Really, you want to talk about that one? Um, no? Yes. Yeah, you can. You can come with me on a long layover. Maybe we should try to do that this summer. We haven't. Yeah, we have The whole family hasn't come with, but you've been to Barcelona and... Edinburgh, San Diego, I think. Yeah. Do I lift weights? <laughs> I don't like lifting weights, but I do lift weights when I have to on the road. Both Aaron and I are blue belts in jiu-jitsu, so that's what we like to do. Do you feel you have enough time with your family or wish you had more time? Yeah, for sure. I wish I had more time, but that's why we do trips like this and make up for the time that we don't have when I'm gone. Okay, this one's for you guys. All of us? No, you and Amelia. Oh. Are your kids more impressed with you being a pilot or an influencer? Uh, <laughs> uh, pilot. <laughs> pilot? Yeah. Yeah, that's more impressive. Um, what do you think? Um, what's an influencer again? <laughs> <laughs> an influencer is like someone who's famous on YouTube or Instagram. You aren't famous on YouTube. No, I know. Yes, you are. No. <laughs> I'm making a YouTube video right now! <laughs> You're about to hit 100,000 likes. 100,000 subscribers, yeah. Almost. Um, then, uh, influencer. Do you think that's cooler than being an airline pilot? Wait, actually, uh, airline pilot. Okay. Pilot. Okay. Are your eyes different colors? Yes. The, they're both my both. wife and I have a brown and blue eye. Neither of us have it, though. Yeah, they both have blue eyes. But when my wife and I look at each other, our brown eyes line up and our blue eyes line up. We complete each other. <laughs> <laughs> How do your kids do with you being a pilot and being gone? Oh, I know. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of annoying because he's always, like, gone and, um, like, he doesn't really stay at home that much. How do you deal with it? Um... You cuddle a lot when I'm home? Yeah. That's why <laughs> I cuddle. That's why you cuddle? And I also like cuddling. Yeah. What about uh, you, sweetheart? Well, I know that I call you a lot when mom's calling you, at least. Yeah. How does your family feel when you go on adventures without them? Well, based on, based on this adventure we just had, I think they're... One of us prefers not to be on my adventures. Sometimes I like to not be on your adventures, so I don't know what happens on the adventures. It depends what kind of adventure. Right? But like if it's like if he's like swimming with whales or something. Like I know you've done that. Yeah. So have you? Yeah. I mean, well, well yeah. like I'm yeah. fine with it if yeah. it's like treasure hunting because once we found like a, a Hot Wheels call. No. <laughs> so <laughs> if it's like treasure hunting. I'm fine. But. Okay. Last one. How do you balance being away from family and your career? I balance it just by making the most of the time I'm at home and going on trips like this. I almost forgot we were in Moab, Utah. You almost forgot? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're not in Moab, Utah. We're like in yeah. the middle of nowhere in Utah right now. Yeah. yeah well, when, when we get back to the hotel, we're in Moab, Utah. Yeah, that's true. Although we're in Utah, yeah. at least. We're in Utah. <laughs> I hope this answers some of your questions. I hope you enjoyed being on a little family vacation with us. And if you like this, subscribe, and we'll see you on the next layover. Before we get to the bloopers, I want you to help me celebrate hitting 100,000 subscribers by leaving a comment below of your favorite travel memory. I'll pick one lucky winner, and I'm gonna send this bag of swag from DG Pilot in downtown St. Paul. It's a great shop. If you're ever in St. Paul or you wanna shop online, he's got all the swag you need. Bags, airplane models, hats, shirts. It's awesome. Check him out, dgpilot.com in downtown St. Paul. So drop a comment down below with your favorite travel memory and I'll pick one lucky winner to send this bag of swag. I can't wait to see what you say. Okay, on to the bloopers. I really don't know if it's gonna be a fun day or not a fun day. Okay. Oh dad, I wanna do, I wanna do go down the ladder again. We're gonna we go down the ladder. We're, we're not, this down. is as far as we're going. And then we're headed back. We're just trying to go away from that the people. Way. We're gonna, we're just gonna hang out here for a little bit, buddy. Sorry, I'm getting annoyed with kids whining right now. I'm like almost mad at it. Okay. Well, 
we're gonna have a great whooper reel. <laughs> okay, you understand everybody know you? <laughs> <laughs> Do non revs get priority over complimentary upgrades? You can't be doing that, okay? Okay, well don't. Then go somewhere else if you're going to. Last two fall off with. Get off the tracks. Oh, get off the tracks. Get off the tracks. Come over here, Anders, real quick. <laughs> I have to, no, I won. I won. Oh, it's a car. It's a car. We thought there was a train coming. <laughs> I still won. Oh, that was fun. <laughs> we thought we almost lost the whole family. <laughs> hey, let's try that again. Oh boy. <laughs> let's try that again. All right. <laughs> Hope we don't crash. Ready? Alright. You guys ready? Let's do it. Let's do it. I I can't do that. I was I was like doing funny things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alright, you wanna start over? Let's start over. Well you can put piece together when we get into the Jeep. We don't have to do that again, right? Oh, it's cool. All good. Wait, one more time. Sorry, I was Daddy. Yeah. Wait, are we gonna crash? No, no honey. Sure. He's just making Why did you it's clickbait. Clickbait. Oh, okay. okay. We can always turn around, right? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? I think there's a point where you can't turn around. No. <laughs> You're racking up the steps here, buddy. <laughs> How many steps? One thousand. <laughs> He's up three hundred from the last, from when we stopped to put the roof on. Have you been running next to the car? We didn't even know. It. <laughs> Got a winter jeep right here. So, if you ask me, it is Gemini Bridge is a good spot spot to go when you're in the of Utah. Uh, of course it is. It's the best spot to go, and you should go there all the time. I just found the bathroom. Under, the wind's blowing. Just make sure the wind's not blowing into your face. Maybe stand on the other side of the road. Go around the bush the other way so that the wind doesn't blow it back into you. So turn that way. There you go. Go behind that big bush. Okay, just make sure it's not too windy. 